stand with me tonight and let's sing together the banner of the cross. <laughs> count everything but loss and to crown him king toil and sing neath the banner of the cross when the glory dawns tis drawing very near it is hastening day by day then before our king the foe shall disappear and the cross the world shall sway count everything but loss and to crown him king toil and sing neath the banner of the cross thank you can be seen well good evening welcome back to our evening service tonight glad you are with us this evening uh, let me just make a uh, way of reminder, don't forget this coming uh, Saturday is our Ben Project Bake Sale at Jitter's Coffee Shop, and I hope you can help us out with that. And spread the word. I hadn't mentioned that, but spread the word. Let others know that we're going to be there, and uh, we would appreciate that. Uh, also, don't forget next, uh, next Sunday uh, will be our Super Bowl Sunday. We will not have regular evening service. We'll meet down in the Family Life Center at 5 o'clock. And also, if you would like to bring soups, chili sandwiches, chips, dips, desserts, and drinks, uh, that will make it all the better. Uh, so uh, look forward to that. Also, don't forget uh, tonight after service, ministry leaders meeting over in the examples classroom. And then men, if you would, don't forget to pick up a flyer and hopefully sign up for our Gridiron Conference in Birmingham. Uh, the deadline for that uh, with money. Uh, which is 149 for your conference and hotel stay is February the 11th, and so uh, we look. I look really looking forward to that weekend, and so uh, hope you're marking that on your calendars, and then the other announcements that you see in the bulletin. All right, let's have our ushers come forward, and we'll receive our evening offering. Let's pray. Father, we do give you thanks for this day. We thank you for service this morning and your blessings and for touching hearts and lives. And, and Lord, we just uh, thank you so much for your word and how powerful it is. And Lord, we thank you now for this time that we've gathered together once again this evening to lift up your name, to praise you for the good God that you are. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for uh, this offering. We just pray your blessings in Christ's name. Amen. Sing together, praise him, praise him. <laughs> praise him, praise him, 
Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children in his arms. He carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, wide with Hosanna's ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. All right, if you have your Bibles, be turning with me to the book of Matthew. Chapter 22, I am uh, going to do something a little different tonight. <laughs> you come back on Sunday nights, you've gotten where you hear that often, don't you? Uh, we're going to do something just a little bit different tonight. Um, I am not going to preach you a regular sermon. Um, I just want to share with you, last week we, we began looking at uh, the ministry of Jesus. And I just I want to share with you uh, why I believe that servant evangelism is um, close to God's heart. And, and I want to do it um, by just sharing the scriptures that have changed me as far as when I think about ministry and how I do it. Uh, and so that's, that's what I want to do. So I'm going uh, noteless, so that could be scary um, and, uh, because my brain is, well, it's just not what it used to be when I was 20. And uh, so, uh, but I just want to share some things with us tonight. Uh, last week we looked at uh, Matthew 9, and we looked at how Jesus viewed people. And if you remember, we, we kind of, we, we, we honed in on, a, on that word compassion and we looked at how throughout the New Testament that Jesus uh, had compassion on people. And when he had that compassion on people, we, we saw that uh, every time he had, that word is used, that it moved him to do something. Uh, it moved him into action. Um, and so um, what I want us to take away from that is something, it was something I didn't hit on, but it was simply this. We kind of looked at it but without saying it. And that is that Jesus ministered to people's needs, right? Without any, with all the examples that we looked at, whether, it's, whether you go back and if you look at, um, uh, say, uh, if it was the paralytic, if it was someone who was blind, uh, if it was the, the one who had leprosy, uh, Jesus ministered to their needs. Because remember even last week as we looked at the two blind men, uh, and, and Jesus stopped, and he says, well, what do you want me to do for you? What do you need? 
basically. What do you need? And they were like, Lord, we want to see. And he met that need. Uh, I believe that's how Jesus ministered. He looked at people's needs and he ministered to those needs. And as he ministered, uh, he shared truth with them. Uh, in Matthew 22 uh, is what we call, uh, and it's probably a little subheading if you've got one of those in your Bible uh, over, the, over that text, it'll say the great commandment. Uh, uh, there are two uh, massive greats in the New Testament. It is the great commission, Matthew 28, and the great commandment of Matthew 22. Um, as, as, as I think about ministry and as I think about how do we do ministry, those two things go hand in hand, uh, the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. Uh, so we've looked at the Great Commission earlier in the month, and so I want us to look at for just a little bit the Great Commandment. So Matthew 22, beginning in verse 34, it says, But when the Pharisees had heard that, uh, had heard that he silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Now, the, the, they gather together. Some, some look at uh, that little phrase of the Pharisees gathering together, and, and, and they say, wow, that is, that is a fulfillment of Psalm 2, where it tells us that the kings would gather together against uh, Messiah. And, and that's exactly what you see taking place here. Uh, and then as, as, and especially as you, as you look forward into uh, what, what took place afterwards and so forth. Uh, but anyway, verse 35 says, And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Now, we, we know this, right? This comes from the Shema. This comes from Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. This, that comes from every Jewish person knows the Shema. They, they quote it every day, right? It is, it's, it's what they go back to and they quote Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. Uh, and they teach it all the time to their children. It is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so, so Jesus quotes... He goes back and he quotes to them Deuteronomy 6. And what I want you to notice is he, he says it's with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. So it is our emotions, it is our will, and it is our intellect that we are to love God with all of our emotions, all of our will, and all of our intellect. Um, it, it, it encompasses, basically, he just says, listen, it encompasses all of who we are. Our love for God, there, there's no part of us that we can leave out of loving God. All of who we are, we are to love God. Right? Uh, and so, and then he goes into the second thing, which is, uh, and a second is like it, you shall love your neighbor uh, as yourself on these two commandments uh, depend all the law and the prophets. So, what I, so as we look at that second phrase, he says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, as we think about, well, uh, who is my neighbor? Well, basically, your neighbor is basically whoever's around you at that moment. That's your neighbor. Whether if you're at home, that's your neighbor, right? Beside your house, that's your neighbor. If you're standing in Walmart in that moment, whoever's in front of you checking out or whoever's behind you, that's your neighbor. It's, it's wherever you find yourself is, is kind of your neighbor. And so because we're called to love people in all sorts of situations wherever we are, right? Is there, is there, I mean, there's not like a place we go where we go, well, I'm in this place so I don't have to love anybody. That doesn't exist. So, but then the next question is, well, then how should we love those people? As we think about us as a church, how, how, how do we love our neighbors? Well, who's our neighbors? Well, it's Fulton. Our immediate is Fulton. And so how do we love the people of Fulton? Um, I, 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 as I think about our church, I wrote down, I did write down some words, but... Uh, uh, there is what they call the go and do church and the come and see church. 
and so the go and do is servant evangelism. Uh, servant evangelism is about, uh, as one writer note, it is activating people into ministry because there are no observers. Because it, with servant evangelism, unless you are literally physically handicapped where you can't do something, anybody can do servant evangelism. And so I think, as I think about our church, I, I, I think we are primed to be a go and do church. Uh, it's just a matter of doing it, right? Uh, and so it's a go and do, but it is also a come and see. Come and see. Uh, um, Oh, let me give you one other quote I meant to give you on the go and do, and I'll come back to it here and there. But, but as you think about a go and do church, the go and do church empowers volunteers to serve the not yet converted people. Now, as you think about service, let me just say this. As we think about service, uh, and I'm, 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 there's some things I want to read to us. There's some, uh, as we think about community touches, how can we touch our community? Um, we serve like Jesus served because he's the example. Uh, we serve with humility. Uh, we serve selflessly because that's how Jesus served. We serve because we're not looking for what we're going to get out of it. We're, 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 we're serving to honor the king. Because our king came as a servant. Um, and so, so there's the go and do church, and then there is the come and see church. And what that simply means is uh, there, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a place in the New Testament, in the Gospels, um, where one of the disciples says, hey, I, we have found the Messiah. And he looks at the person and he says, come and see that we have found the Messiah. And so for us as a church, it is, uh, uh, we give out those invitation cards and we say, come and see what God is doing. Come and see. So it is a go and do church and it is a come and see church. And, and, and when you think about that, wow, if we are a go and do church and we are out there ministering and we're out there serving and we're out there inviting and we're looking at those people and we give them that invitation card and we're like, oh, come and see. Come and see how good the Lord is. Come and see what God is doing. Can I just put it out there? What will the Lord do amongst us if we are a go and do and a come and see church? I think he would... Uh, do some things we just never thought he would do. Um, so, let me share with us just for a few minutes. We're going. I promise we're getting out early. Okay, <coughs> <coughs> Danny Deal. Okay, so uh, let me share with us just a, a few things real quick. Some tangible ways to show the love of God. Now, so it, it, when 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 we did uh, servant evangelism. Uh, the few things we got to do when I was in Springfield, the, the one thing we emphasized over and over and over again to our people is when you are ministering, when you are serving, and, and, and they're like, well, why in the world are you doing what you're doing? It's very simple. We just want to show the love of God in a tangible way. That's it. We just want to show the love of God in a tangible way. That's what servant evangelism is. And if it opens the door to, and, and hopefully it'll open the door where you can give someone an invitation card and say, hey, we would love for you to what? Come and see. Uh, if it opens the door to have a conversation and, and, and share the gospel, then that's what you do. But, it, it, but it's, it's just a way to show the love of God in a tangible way. So let me share with you just some ideas that uh, we, we could do. Uh, by the way, let me also throw out there, this is a great time to do that, 
that uh, I did notice that the lists that I put out there have been taken, which I'm glad. So that means somebody took it with an interest in it. So if you are interested in helping organize these uh, just to kind of help oversee our community touches, see me. Uh, and, and if you say, well, I'd like to, but I'm not sure I can, I, I will guide you uh, all the way. It's not, it's, it's, it is not hard. Okay? So, uh, so let me just share with you, just, these are things that when I thought about our church, when I thought who we are, like, I, I thought these, these are doable. These are things we can do. For example, let's say uh, because we have people in the medical field, uh, uh, what if you did a free uh, blood pressure screening? You set it up in the gym, people come by, and they can do that. Bottle water giveaway. By the way, these things don't even cost that much money. So giving away bottles of water, whether that is uh, if you go to a park on a summer day, and there's kids there, and, you're, and you just or you just share with families. We did one time. We did it with uh, uh, we did a um, we did a VBS in the park one time. Uh, uh, you can do free pizza giveaway in the park. You just tell people we got free pizza. Just come get a slice. Um, those kinds of things. Uh, business blast. I love this idea, especially for downtown Fulton for our businesses down there. It says, bring a small gift, such as a, a basket of candy, into small businesses for their employees. And it doesn't even, that wouldn't even cost that much to put together a small basket, because we do that kind of stuff all the time. That's the reason I thought about it, because we've done it for football teams and basketball teams and all these other teams. And so what if we did it for small businesses that's downtown? And we just go in those businesses and say, hey, this is who we are, and we just wanted to share this with you, and you give them a card. Always give an invitation card, right? And so we just show our small businesses that we're here and we care and we just wanted to share. Candy giveaway. Uh, they, it talks about uh, instead of saying, hey, would you like some? Rather, and it's prepackaged candy, not homemade on this one, but, uh, but, but whether you did it, say, on Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day or Easter or whatever, you just put together a little thing of candy with the card attached to it, and you just say, hey, we just wanted to uh, share with you some sweets. Car wash, free car washes. Just set up in the parking lot and have free car washes. Christmas caroling. Now, you say, we already do that. Yes, we do. We do it for our shut-ins. We, do, we, we, do we go to nursing homes or, or those that are in their home and can't get out. But what if we did a neighborhood? What if we went house to house in a neighborhood and sang two or three songs and then gave a couple of however many people are in that house and gave them candy canes with a card? Right? Um. Here's one of my favorites. Coffee giveaway. Amen? Woo! I just felt something right there. I just, I don't know what that was. After my sermon this morning, I probably shouldn't say that. But anyway, so uh, a coffee hot chocolate giveaway. Who would not, how many of you here that drink coffee or, and or hot chocolate? Because you can do both. Uh, do regular, decaf, and hot chocolate. How many of you, if you're driving by a church and you saw a sign that said free coffee, would stop and get a free cup of coffee, right? I would. Um, uh, I don't know how many cars go by here on a given day during the week, but I'm sure it's a lot, right? And if, so if we had it set up from, say, 6 to 7 or 6 to 7.30, and we just had, and we had people holding signs for free coffee or free hot chocolate, they literally drive up, and we ask them what kind of coffee or hot, if they want coffee or hot chocolate. Because somebody's going to say, and they're going to be like, why are you doing this? Why are we doing it? We just want to show the love of God in a tangible way. And you give them their cup of coffee and the invitation card. That's easy, isn't it? Cookie giveaway. Not homemade. You've got to do prepackaged. People are a little leery 
uh, if you're giving away homemade sometimes. So you do little Oreo chocolate chip, go to Sam's, get the little prepackaged things, right? What if we flooded uh, our schools, say, for all the teachers or something like that, and we, we sent all the teachers a little cookie thing with a card just to say we care. Easter baskets, putting together small uh, Easter baskets to give away to people, uh, you, you can do that very inexpensively. Two to two to two fifty a basket probably, and give out free Easter baskets to kids. Now we've been talk, we've talked about this. Some of us guys have been talking about doing general yard cleanup for our shut-ins. But what if we just did it for people who needed it, right? What if it's a like a shut-in who doesn't come to our church? Because there's a good chance you people know you people. I don't mean that like that sounded. You know people in your neighborhood who may be shut in, right? And we could go to their house and show them that we care by doing some general yard cleanup. I remember Holly and I went to, uh, this is for the, if you want to do something on the 4th of July, kind of an Independence Day bash. Uh, we, We attended one in Springfield with some friends of ours and it was a small church. Um, now they plan. You got to plan this for probably like a year out. You can't just you know on the fly do this. But but they did a outdoor event in a cow field, and you had to watch where you stepped, right? And so and it was really fun when you went back to the car at night. But anyway, so um, but they did this a smaller church, and they did this huge Fourth of July bash, and there were people every. Where they had live music, they had food, they had stuff for the kiddos. Now, sure, that's going to cost you a little bit more than doing a bottle, a water bottle giveaway, but it's a huge impact on people. Um, so that's just that's just, and, and we've got fields that are non-cow fields, right? So uh, that's a that's a plus. Um, I still think, I still think, I'm telling you, I still think that we could do an outdoor, in the ball field, an outdoor, family-friendly, uh, like during the summer, do a family-friendly film and show it up on the big, you get one of those blow-up screens, do it out in the ball field and invite the community to come. And we could do, we, you could grill hamburgers or dogs, dogs are cheaper, you could do dogs, uh, and, and, and you can get chips at Sam's and all these things. And it, do, it would not cost that much. Probably the most expensive thing would be the screen that you got to rent. We did it in Spring Hill when we did our church plant. And, 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 and the, the city is the one that put on the movie. They put the movie on, but they didn't do all the extra stuff. So there were churches all over the area that we, they kind of got together and it just kind of happened. It was amazing how it would happen. But, but like the, the big Baptist church, they would kind of do the main food because they could afford to do the main food. And, and then you had like we would do, we put together like little, we, one time we did cups and it had a, like a little goodie cup with candy and all that kind of stuff for the kiddos. And so we had those and we gave those away. We did free bottles of water, free bags of chips, just things that went along with what you were going to be doing. Um, and they would have literally a few hundred people come out to see a free, family-friendly film. That's hard to say fast. Uh, and, and down in the park, in the local park. And I'm, and, and I'm telling you, why, why is that going to work here? Because we don't do anything like that. No one else is doing it. So we could be cutting edge. I'm telling you. So it's things like that that I think would be a huge, huge blessing to our community um, uh, if, if we would do things. Um, just a couple other ideas real quick and then we're going to be done. Uh, what, about, what about single mom's oil changes slash tire pressure check for you mechanically inclined guys and or ladies? Don't want to leave those out. I did not include myself in that as you noticed. Because we all know that would not go well. So, uh, but what about single moms who may not can afford that oil change? But what if we got word that there is a single mom who needed it and we set that up 
on a Saturday morning, something like that. Um, one other thing that you can do, whether it's in the fall or if it's in the spring, and I think we may have mentioned this before, but that would be like smoke detector batteries. You just get the 9-volt the, the, the batteries together, maybe two, wrap those up with an invitation card, and just go door to door, and you literally give out 9-volt batteries and let people know, hey, it's that time of the year that you need to change out your smoke detector batteries, which reminds me that I need to do the same at the house. Simple things that we can do as a church, that we can look into our community and just say, we are here, we care, we love, and we want you to come and see what God is doing. Servant evangelism, I mean this, gets me excited. I love to serve. My Lord served. So here's what I want to so, so we're going to pray and we're going to be done, but just I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that, that the Lord has got your wheels turning. And I'm hoping you'll, you'll, throughout the week, you may get an idea and you'll jot that idea down. They say, what if we did this? Because all the ideas don't need to come from me. Because God wants, to, God wants to use all of us in his kingdom. So I just wanted to take a few minutes tonight and share my heart with you. Because what, I'm telling you, what I've just shared with you is my heart. Um, it, it's, it, it really is who I am. Um, and so I, I, I look forward to um, what God is going to do. I'm telling you. I, we, we have not scratched the surface of, a, of what I think God's going to do in and through us as a church. So let's pray. Our Father, we give you thanks so much, Lord, for your example. Lord, as I think about how selfless you are. And Lord, at times, how selfish I can be. Oh Lord, forgive me. Lord, I pray for us as a church that you would help us to be a go and do and a come and see church. Lord, I believe you desire that for us. And Lord, I thank you that, um, that there is a way through servant evangelism, Lord, that absolutely everybody in our church can be involved. Father, I pray that you would indeed give us ideas. I pray that you would give us wisdom. I pray for um, new ministries that will open. But Lord, I pray that as we go and as we serve and as we minister, Lord, I pray that you would indeed give us compassionate hearts. I ask, Lord, that you would help us um, to love as you love. I pray, Lord, that, um, that you will be honored with all that we do. Use us. Lord, use us for your glory. And we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. You are dismissed.